let us see about full wave diode rectifier so already we have seen about uncontrolled half wave rectifier in the previous two videos so in this video we will see about uncontrolled full wave rectifier the full wave rectifier is of two types one is the midpoint diode rectifier or center tap diode rectifier so what do you mean by this midpoint diode rectifier so you have a primary transformer and this is the uh, secondary winding and this secondary winding at the center point that is the midpoint load will be connected so that is called midpoint diode rectifier or center tapped rectifier means the secondary is center tapped the other type is full bridge rectifier so the diodes will be connected in a bridge fashion so this is full bridge rectifier so let us see about both these things in this video full wave midpoint diode rectifier so we can see that in this midpoint diode rectifier you have two diodes d1 and d2 and the load is connected at the center point or midpoint so during positive half cycle what happens so this during the positive half cycle plus minus will be induced here and he, in the secondary also plus minus plus minus is there so since it is positive this diode will be forward biased whereas in this portion here you have negative so this diode will be reverse biased so during positive half cycle so here it is positive so this diode conducts and current flows through the load in this direction and this diode will be reverse biased and it will not conduct so load current flows from suppose this is um, capital a and this is b current flows from a to b and load voltage is plus and minus here next during the negative half cycle what happens so here you have negative and here you have positive so this will be negative and this will be positive negative and positive so this diode will be reverse biased and this diode will be forward biased so now current flows in this direction so what is the uh, direction of the current through the load again it flows from a to b so though positive half cycle d1 contacts and negative half cycle d2 contacts but always the current through the load is in the same direction that is from a to b in both the cases so you will get unidirectional output current and unidirectional output voltage so this is the midpoint converter so let us draw the supply voltage waveform and output waveform so v not is given by so during positive half cycle current flows like this so output voltage is vm again during negative half cycle current flows in this manner and you will get the output voltage so this is due to d1 and this is due to d2 now we will draw the waveform for voltage across d1 and d2 so when a diode is conducting the output voltage i mean voltage across the diode is zero so you will get zero and when the diode is not conducting what happens that is um, during negative half cycle d1 will not conduct so at that time what happens 
this voltage is negative here positive here so this voltage will apply across this voltage plus this voltage will appear across the d1 so load voltage is already vm that voltage combines with this supply voltage minus vm will appear here across d1 so that you will get 2 vm here so diodes will be subjected to minus 2 vm during reverse bias condition that is the peak inverse voltage of the diode is 2 vm in case of midpoint rectifier so let us find the average output voltage here you see the output voltage waveform if you see one cycle you are getting two identical waveform so what we can do is you can find the average of this uh, one cycle and multiply by 2 so you will get the uh, average value for the whole time period 2 pi so 1 by t so the total time period is 2 pi integral 0 to 2 pi v naught into d of omega t so v naught is vm sin omega t so substitute v naught equal to vm sin omega t but here I have changed the um, interval 0 to pi because I am doing the integration for only one interval 0 to pi but I have multiplied by 2 so that I will get for total time period 2 pi so again you simplify this apply the limits you will get 2 vm by pi so this is the average output voltage now we will find the RMS value root mean square value so square it find the mean value take root of it so root mean square value same thing apply the limits to 0 to pi multiply by 2 and you will get vm by root 2 so next we will find what is the ripple factor so it gives the a measure of how much a output voltage waveform is deviated from the ideal DC waveform so you have a standard formula we have already found what is VRMS and V average substitute this you will get the ripple factor so in half way rectifier we got around 1.21 but in full wave it is only 0.48 so ripple is very low here in case of full wave rectifier let us see the limitations of a midpoint uh, converter we can see that you need a, a center tapped um, uh, secondary so that um, uh, the voltage at this uh, secondary and this secondary should be equal so that the output voltage will be uniform in both the positive and negative half cycle then you can see that um, this uh, secondary of the transformer is utilized only during the past half cycle and during the negative half cycle it remains idle similarly this uh, secondary uh, remains idle during past half cycle and it, it is uh, used only during the negative half cycle it means that the transformer we have invested but we are not utilizing it properly so it remains underutilized and the other problem is uh, the peak inverse voltage that is during reverse bias condition the diode is subjected to uh, twice the peak voltage it means that you have to uh, use a higher rating diode so that it can withstand the reverse voltage so if we go for a higher rating diode cost of the diode will increase so these are the limitations of midpoint full wave diode rectifier next we will see about full bridge rectifier so full bridge rectifier feeding R load 
here uh, in bridge rectifier diodes will be connected in a bridge fashion and it is a single phase rectifier so you have two legs so this is one leg and this is the second leg and the supply will be connected to each leg so here it is connected here and b is connected to the other leg and you have a uh, specific pattern in numbering the diodes so if you see the upper diodes will be uh, numbered in odd numbers and lower diodes will be odd um, will have even numbers so this is done so that it will be easy to analyze the three phase circuits now we will see about positive half cycle so during positive half cycle so this is positive and this is negative so what happens so this positive is connected to a and this negative is connected to b so this diode d1 will contact and you can see here since positive is connected here this diode will not contact this negative is connected so d3 will not contact so d1 and d2 will contact and current flows in this direction let us take this as so this is the point a and this is connected here so this is b so positive half cycle d1 and d2 conduct and output voltage is equal to vab during negative half cycle you have negative here and positive here so negative is connected here positive connected here so negative is connected here so this diode conducts positive is connected here so d3 conducts so d3 conduct and d4 conduct and current flows in this way okay again current flows from this end to this end but what is this end connected to b and this end is connected to a so output voltage is equal to vba so at any time two diodes will conduct d1 and d2 and here d3 and d4 now we will see the output voltage waveform so this is supply voltage waveform this is output so vab and the other waveform is b ba waveform so during positive half cycle output is vab during negative half cycle output is vba so you will get a unidirectional output waveform now you have to find out what is the voltage across diode so when a diode is conducting output voltage is zero so d1 and d2 output voltage is zero across uh, d1 and d2 voltage is zero and when d3 and d4 is conducting this diode will be reverse biased so it will be reverse biased by this supply voltage vm okay so this is d3 is conducting so when d3 is conducting the voltage appearing across this one will be only this supply voltage so that is vm so you will get minus vm here so now we will see the difference between half wave rectifier full wave rectifier with uh, midpoint and full wave bridge rectifier so v average is vm by pi this we have derived in the previous videos and uh, for midpoint it is actually twice this half wave rectifier because waveform have doubled so output voltage is also 2 vm by pi in both the cases vrms is vm by 2 vm by root 2 ripple factor it's 1.21 very high value so, but in full wave 
it has been reduced to 0.48 rectification ratio is 40.5 percentage only in half a rectifier whereas it is double the times 81 percentage in full bridge peak inverse voltage is vm here it is 2 vm in center tap transformer because of that center tap transformer here it is vm only so number of diodes is 1 2 and here it is 4 so depending um, on your requirement you can choose the rectifier for your application so the points to remember here are full wave rectifier is called two pulse converter because you get two pulses in every every cycle and full wave rectifiers use a more number of diodes compared to half wave rectifier but it would produces higher average voltage and rms voltage ripple content is also low in case of full wave rectifier when we come to a diode rectifier you cannot control the output voltage because diode is a uncontrolled device and power cannot flow from load to source so it only flows from ac source to dc load so these are the limitations of diode rectifier so these are some of the references and if you like the video do subscribe to our channel read electric vehicle thank you